Well, good evening and welcome to this little uh, evening prayer. Uh, we haven't uh, had one for um, a week or so, so uh, thank you for joining in. Um, uh, a verse, let me start with a verse from the end of uh, Psalm 43, which I'll read for us tonight. The psalmist says, Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. So some words of introduction. That this evening may be holy and good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. So just a chance to pause, be quiet at the end of this day, committing the day to the Lord. So we pray as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Well, I'm going to read for us Psalm 43. Psalm 43 goes together uh, with Psalm 42, I think, but I'm just going to read Psalm 43 for us. He says, Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Rescue me from deceitful and wicked men. You are my God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Well, on Sunday, Remembrance Sunday, we spend a bit of time reflecting on Psalm 46, just a few psalms further on. What causes war? We thought about what, what ceases war. But I started by asking what comfort is there? What comfort is there in a world where, where there's war and where there's any number of things that causes our hearts to be troubled? Or in the words of Psalm 42 and 43 that, that put it like this uh, repeatedly, it's the refrain, isn't it? Why are you downcast? Oh, my soul, any number of things aren't there that might cause our souls to feel downcast. And you will know this as well as me, that, that just at the moment it's far, far easier for us to say to God, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you letting these things happen? Far easier to grumble to him about what's going on than to feel the comfort of God as our stronghold or to or to feel that we can say what verse the psalmist says in verse four, that um, God is my joy and my delight. I imagine grumbling rather than joy and delight are much quicker uh, to come from our hearts and our voices just now, aren't they? And yet uh, slowly, uh, almost imperceptibly, there is a movement through the psalm, Psalm 42 and 43 with this repeated refrain why are you downcast O my soul why so disturbed within me there's a there's a slow movement uh, slowly and surely as the psalmist's spirits are raised and his downcast soul is buoyed with with a glimmer of of hope uh, spilling over even into joy and delight and we'll get there in a moment at uh, the end of us uh, end of psalm 43 and verse 5 which i read at the start uh, if you've ever been here to the vicarage you'll know we've got a log burner in the lounge and uh, so we've got a log pile outside and uh, one of the things i love to do especially uh, obviously this time of year on a friday evening at the end of the working week is um, is to go outside and to uh, to unwind and to switch off sometimes by chopping uh, some wood but uh, certainly by bringing in a, a bundle a basket full of of wood to burn for the weekend and then there's the joy of lighting it and the smell and the warmth the, the feeling of the warmth uh, slowly coming into the room and uh, sometimes you know if you get the, the timing wrong and uh, you miss putting on the next uh, log or well, the file dwindles and you have to coax it back into life sometimes giving the embers a, a gentle uh, blow uh, encouraging the the glow to become a flame and the heat uh, back into a raging uh, fire warming uh, the room and warming our hearts uh, well, by the end of, of Psalm 43, uh, it's like that's what the psalmist has done with his own soul, with his own heart. 
Uh, and the final refrain there in verse uh, five, it seems to come, doesn't it, with a with a renewed ringing confidence, a renewed and restored and an invigorated hope that perhaps hasn't been there in the psalm previously. Put your hope in God, he says, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. And uh, when it might seem counterintuitive to us to, to go to God, to go to God as shelter and refuge, I mean, if he's in charge, uh, he is the one uh, that we uh, trust is uh, in charge of all that's going on even now, even in these strange, unsettling times. It might seem counterintuitive to go to the one who's in charge of everything, to go to him for, for refuge and shelter. But where else can we go? He is still the place to go. He's the only place to go. He's the only stronghold. He's the only place uh, of refuge and safety. The psalmist knows that he's the place to go, doesn't he? Even when his soul feels downcast, uh, he asks that God would lead him there. Verse three, um, uh, send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain. That is the place to go. God's presence is the place to go. So tonight, however downcast you might feel, uh, however distant from God you might feel, God has not gone anywhere. He's not changed. He is still the place of safety, the place of refuge. If you feel like you've lost your joy and your delight in him, well, can I tell you this, that it's not because he has ceased to be uh, uh, truly delightful. So come back to him. Would you do that? Do what the psalmist does and uh, come back to him. Put your hope in God. Well, Jesus says, doesn't he, that our Heavenly Father, he knows what we need even before we ask. Let's let's talk to him now. Lord, our God, help us to put our hope in you tonight. However far we might feel from you, however downcast our soul, help us uh, with a renewed hope, a renewed vigour even, to put our trust in you, to hope in you, even when uh, it seems hard to do that. And Father, when we feel downcast and far from you, even rejected by you, or even that you may have forgotten us, we thank you that in Jesus Christ, as we dwell and think on him, we have a constant reminder, a certain reminder of your love, sure and secure. Father, would you restore to us the joy and delight of your salvation uh, that you offer us in Jesus Christ. And we ask these things this night in his name. Amen. So be present, O merciful God, and protect us, protect all those who need protection through the silent hours of this night. So that we who are wearied, and we are wearied at the moment, Father, by the changes and the chances of this fleeting world, might you help us to rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we just pause, Father, and bring to mind all those uh, that we know who need our prayers, whether we know them by name or whether uh, it's just the general sense of many who are struggling and isolated or unwell at this time. And so we uh, bring each of them to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so in peace we will lie down and sleep for you alone, Lord. Make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us. And watch over us, the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope that's a comfort and encouragement to you to run to the Lord tonight, to cling to him and uh, with your downcast soul to take fresh delight and joy in the God who is our hope, our stronghold, our strength and our refuge. Well, good night and God bless.